The old folks say that Osanian stories are as dependable as the sun and moon rising. Every night at sunsetting time, he gathers the children around and plays them tales of long ago. As soon as the sun begins to set in the western sky, the first lazy notes from Osanian's banjo can be heard drifting across the field. Hearing the banjo, the children would hurry to finish their chores. They'd sit as still as they could, wondering what tales he'd play, what stories he'd tell. What story you gonna tell, Osanian? Showing his few remaining teeth, Osanian just chuckled and said, I shall tell you the story of Enon and Nyla, but you must come near, close enough to touch my words. Many years ago, the place where we now sit was inhabited by two villages, the Orun village and the Oshu village, and they deeply resented each other. The Orun village was on the eastern side. It was mountainous and plentiful with animals. On the western side of the river was the Oshu village. It was wide and flat, bountiful with plants. Nyla was from the Oshu village. She was often compared to water, always in motion, dancing to the rhythms of the earth. If you were to ask Nyla about her village, she'd lift her head and say, My people are farmers. At one time, the plains were very hot and dry. We might have perished, but we prayed to Ubuntun, the great sky god, for help. Ubuntun sent rain, and the land was made fertile. The women in my village are proud. My mother taught me to sculpt the earth into bowls of all shapes and sizes. And when I got older, my grandmother taught me to weave baskets and to make the blue ink that we wear on our bodies during ceremonies. Enon was from the Orun village. He loved music and dazzled everyone with his gift of song. If one were to ask Enon about his village, he'd say, The men in my village are fishermen. My people became fishermen because they wanted to save the many beautiful animals that live around us. In my village, there are all types of animals. Sometimes we use the skin of these animals for warmth. In ceremonies, we dance and pray, asking Ubuntu and the great sky god and the animals for forgiveness for using our swords. One day, Enon climbed a great tree situated at the base of the river where the Orun village and the Oshu village joined. He hid amongst the leaves and began to play his flute. After a while, he looked up and saw a young girl about his age walking down a path towards him. She had a basket on her head and strands of glass beads wrapped around her waist. He noticed by the way that she was dressed that she was from the Oshu village. Curious, he watched her as she moved towards the river. This young girl was Nyla. While she gathered the beads, she noticed Enon reflected in the water. She called to him. Who are you? Come down from there and present yourself. Enon climbed down the tree. I am Enon of the Arun village. Nyla sat thoughtfully. After a few moments, she said, My people are fearful of yours. And mine of yours, he replied. They broke the silence and said in unison, But, but I, I am, am not fearful, fearful of you. Since that first encounter, they met often, soon becoming great friends. As the years went by, Enon and Nyla grew into beautiful young adults. One warm day, having found a break in her chores, Nyla went to the riverbank. She was not surprised to see Enon sitting by the great tree, keenly playing his flute. He was looking at her differently than he had in the past, and she was held in his luminous gaze. Enon took a deep breath. I want, he stammered, to speak to you. His voice was soft and gentle. Strange, this wonderful feeling. With you, I am free. Hearing Enon's words, Nyla's heart sang. This newfound love transformed each day into a glorious day of freedom. One day, Enon and Nyla realized their love was sure to be discovered. It was strong and true. However, the traditions of their land forbade them. They were from different villages and were destined to be separated forever, for neither would be allowed to leave their tribe. And that was the law and disobedience meant certain death. They agreed that they must come up with a solution. They parted ways and promised to meet again in three days. On the second night, in the swirling white mist of dream, a vision came to them. Tariq, 
The trickster messenger god appeared before them in the form of a chameleon. He spoke in a husky, baritone voice. My name is Tariq. I have come to help you. Speaking in a riddle, he said to Enon and Nyla, Remember your family. Trust in your heart. If you seek true love, pray for a new start. When Enon woke, he kneeled in prayer to Ubuntu, the great sky god. He knew what he must do. He had to ask Ubuntu for union with Nyla. Nyla woke and went straight to her father's hut. Father, may I speak to you? I am in love with an enchanting man that I have known since I was a child. He is from the Orun village. Her father's eyes flashed with anger. Have you forgotten your way, Nyla? I forbid you to be with him. Determined to keep his own, he vowed to keep the two separated. Nyla left the hut and ran to the river. There she found Enon kneeling by the river's edge. My father says he will declare war upon your people if we do not stay apart. They found themselves kneeling in prayer. Ubuntu, we call on you for guidance. We offer ourselves as a sacrifice. If you accept, please let some token hang in the sky. At that moment, far across the water appeared Tyreek, the chameleon from their dreams. He walked towards them. Everywhere Tyreek stepped, the water became clear, with the stones on the river's bottom sparkling. You called to Ubuntu. He has decided to answer your prayers. You will live and love one another, not just in this moment, but forever in the sky for the world to see. You, Enon, will light the day, burning like the flame of the candle. Nyla will light the night, shining with iridescent brilliance. Your new family will be the earth. New flowers will open to your breath. And with that, Tariq bent, reached down into the river, and splashed water upon them. As they transformed, the villagers noticed a change. In the sky above the river, a cloud of color appeared. Both the Orun and the Ashu villagers ran to the river to see what was happening. They were amazed and aghast as they realized what was occurring. Their hate forced Ubuntu to take the lives of two innocents destined to be destroyed by ignorance and blind faith. Enon and Nyla, now the sun and moon, brought hope of new life to the villagers. And that, my children, said Osanyan, is the story of Enon and his beloved Nyla and how their journeys amongst people and the spirits created the sun, moon, and solar eclipse. Osanyan leaned back, closed his ancient eyes, and began to hum, rocking slowly to the tune of his banjo. The old folks say that when Osanyan speaks, the heavens open, and that's where the magic lies. <laughs>